Hello, how do you do? Nice to see you again, it's been a while. Now, today we've got a bit of a special treat. I'm using a camera I've not used before. This is the EM5 Mark III and the 30 millimeter macro lens. So those of you who are familiar with me already know that I mainly use the E1 Mark III with a 60 millimeter macro lens. Now this one is a little bit more budget friendly. So I'm gonna take it, uh, take it for a spin, so to speak. We're gonna go, this, that's usable. <laughs> that's usable, cut. <laughs> Got my wits about me. Sun's out, so ghosts can't hit you in the sunlight. The ghost comes at me, I'm gonna tell it off. There are mushrooms about. It bodes well. Ooh. Now that orange works really nice against the green, doesn't it? Look at that. I wonder if I can angle it in such a way that. Ooh. I mean, let's just do a little focus test. Look, whoop. That's pretty good. Look at the colors on you. Look at the colors on you. If you had ears, You'll be hearing all of these compliments and you'll be turning red. Can mushrooms blush? Blush rooms! <laughs> I'm shooting in raw, um, but if you don't want to be shooting raw, you can actually just shoot in JPEGs because the colors out of these cameras are astonishing and the JPEG files are beautiful. I shoot in raw because I like the flexibility of editing and also I tend to print very big files. So I need as much information in the file as I could possibly get. Quick tip, when you're looking for mushrooms in the forest like this, you want to try and look for them where they are above the ground level because that way your backgrounds are nice and clutter free and it's easier to make them stand out with a nice shallow depth of field. So, biscuits in the post. And uh, we're gonna go now, see what we find. Just found this epic little mushroom here and it's in the perfect spot for a picture. Now the highlights coming through the trees there are nicely out of focus and creating this wonderful sparkly bokeh effect. Now, I'm a big fan of the bokeh thing. I, I love it. So um, I'm gonna angle the camera quite low down, shooting slightly upwards at the mushroom, uh, including some of the moss here as a bit of foreground blur, make it look all misty and then get that wonderful, beautiful circular highlights in the background. So, um, one of the beautiful things with uh, these Olympus cameras is you can pretty much do all this uh, one-handed without really having to worry too much about your camera settings. So I'm at 200 ISO, but only at a 20th of a second, but because we've got a lot of stability built in the camera, we don't really have to worry too much about shutter speeds, especially with mushrooms, because they don't really, you know, you're not going anywhere, are they? Oh, I love that. I absolutely, I love it. So one of the reasons why I chose to use uh, an Olympus Micro Four Thirds system is exactly this. It's compact, it's super lightweight, and you know, I can compose any image that I like without really having to worry about tripods and you know things like that. I can just get the shots exactly how I want them. And being able to adjust in real time all your camera settings and your exposures and seeing, you know, in most part, seeing the result before you take the picture is a life changer. One of the huge advantages of a Micro Four Thirds system is the actual ability to focus a lot closer as well. Um, Having a smaller camera sensor than the full frame means that we can take pictures of subjects that are half the size. So if you're a macro enthusiast like myself, it means that instead of taking pictures of subjects that are 35 millimeters only, it means I can take pictures of subjects that are 17 and a half millimeters. Oh, I know, game changer, isn't it? So you may have noticed these rather chunky mushrooms all around me. And usually with my 60 millimeter macro, I won't really bother trying to take a picture of them because they're quite big and 
the background is really close to them so I don't get that background subject separation that I like to get to make them really really stand out but um you know I just have a little play and just see what happens you know this 30 mil is the equivalent of a 60 mil so that gives me a ooh, oh hello oh wow wow that orange really works against the green as well click so I'm shooting right now at f5 because I want to pull in a little bit more um, depth of field on this subject itself because it's a larger subject so it means I'm going to need a little bit you know a bit more depth of field on there to get a whole thing in focus but see how close what oh geez oh geez oh wow it makes it look huge oh I love it I love this so this one is quite translucent and I'm lighting it from the top and then underexposing the entire picture by just over one stop. And it's making it look really, really dramatic. But well, I'll take two shots, one with the one without, and then that way you can see exactly how it's, how it's looking. I get 200 ISO, F5, and I get a 20th of a second. And now let's just take a, without the phone, we've got about a fifteenth of a second underexposed. Earlier on, I was telling you to look for subjects in the perfect place, grown above the ground level so that your backgrounds are nice and clear. And look, it looked like it sprouted up especially for you and I. So, I'm gonna make good use of the fact that I've got a wide angle uh, view here, and I'm gonna give this mushroom some way to live. So quite often, I get in really close with my 60 millimeter macro lens, and that, it looks beautiful, but the picture could be taken anyway. The backgrounds tend to be solid, um, but having this wider angle view means that it's got a little house, and you can see a lot of the woodlands behind it, and it contextualizes the picture. I'm gonna make the most of my mobile phone torch, you know, trick, give it a go and hold the camera like this in one hand, getting all that magical bokeh effects again. Now I'm gonna open up the aperture to f3.5 because I'm not shooting as close to the subject, so it means that I don't need as much depth of field there because I'm further away, which means more aperture in focus. So let's have a little, a little play about. I'm having so much fun with this camera. It's so fun, it's lightweight and it's rock steady. Oh, that looks, oh, 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 spaghettios. Now then, oh, it's, it's so nice to be able to just essentially play with your photography. If I was here with a tripod set up, you know, I wouldn't be so free. Ooh, higher res. Nice. Ooh. And it's got a focus stack in, so wonderful. We're gonna go give this a little, uh, little try. Oh, look, they're all in a row, lined up for a cut. So we've just found this row of mushrooms. Look, they're in a straight line. It's, I've never seen it before. It looks epic. So I'm gonna try and see if I can get them all in focus using focus stacking. So the way focus stacking works is you photograph about a third of the way into the scene and then let the camera do all the work. So in order to get all of these mushrooms in focus in one picture, I'm gonna have to shoot at about F22, something like that, but it's quite dark and that means they can have a very high ISO or a very long shutter speed. But focus stacking helps us get around that by shooting multiple frames at different focus distances right the way through and then blends all the bits that are sharp together and then checks the blurry bits in the bin. And we don't tell in ages. I just shot a sequence of images at 500 ISO at f6.3, which means that I can maintain a good sense of image quality without having to slam the ISO up and introducing green and things like that. 
having focus stacking in built into the camera is such such a godsend because I know right now that that focus stack has worked. Um, without that confirmation, I'd be getting home, loading the pictures through the computer, realizing it doesn't work, and then cry myself to sleep. But now, happy getting. That one's colossal. Wow! Now you're a big one. This is fun. I'm having a nice time. So lucky. Oh, boy. He's gonna poke him in the eye. Don't poke him in the eye. He needs to see where he's going. Using my phone again, just to backlight the mushrooms. And it's looking really dramatic, kind of looks like something out of the X-Files. You gotta make sure that you don't see the phone though. <laughs> so I've underexposed the picture again by just over a stop, just to pull in some of the ambient light. And then use this artificial light to illuminate the subject. Oh, I know. I'm gonna do another stack and I'm gonna give us, show his house off. Go there so I'll find it. Right. There. Hold everything steady. Now I'm gonna, it's gonna shoot about eight frames. And now it's blending them together. And then you end up with one file where everything's sharp, like so. That was a fun couple of hours out with my Aeon 5 Mark III and this wicked little 30mm macro lens. It was nice to shoot the mushrooms. I haven't done that in a little while. And I will say, this is super fun to use. If you want to follow along with my social stuff, it's at Geraint Radford Macro. I'm gonna go now before the witches get me. So. No. No, that's weird. It's long. <laughs> I hope silver away.